and welcome to our next lesson video. Uh, today we're starting unit 3B, and so we're going to talk quite a lot about um, terminology here at the very beginning. We're going to talk a lot about um, these key vocabulary terms, words to know, because it's very important. In this unit, we're going to be studying polygons and quadrilaterals, and we're going to look at these relationships between sides and angles of different polygons, but specifically quadrilaterals, and a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. We have a lot of special or unique quadrilaterals or um, categories of quadrilaterals we're going to look at later on in this unit. But to start off, we're going to identify some terminology. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about these, but I'm going to um, write down these uh, definitions of these words to know and possibly add in some pictures for some of them. So make sure at any point that you need to pause the video to copy this down. If I uh, speed up my video and, and get the, the printed uh, words there for you very quickly. Make sure you're pausing to copy it down correctly. Otherwise, um, just kind of follow along. Make sure you're taking really good notes. Uh, so we're going to look at what a polygon is first. And so here's what we have as the definition of a polygon. A closed plane figure with sides and angles. Okay, the sides are straight sides, no curves, um, and they intersect at what we call angles or vertices. Vertices is the plural of the word vertex. So everywhere where two sides intersect is a vertex, okay? And we can further classify those polygons by number of sides and um, the, some more specific classifications. Like you'll see here, we have a regular polygon. A regular polygon is A polygon with congruent sides and angles, or more specifically, like we talked with triangles, that means it's equilateral and equiangular. So a, an equilateral triangle would be a regular triangle because all the sides are, the, are equal and all the angles are equal. Okay, but we could have regular polygons of any number of sizes. A regular quadrilateral would be a square where all four sides are the same and all four angles are the same. And that leads us to talking about a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a specific kind of polygon that is a four-sided polygon. Okay, any polygon with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Now, as we move forward, there's some more specific information. In the last unit, we talked about um, how to find the interior angle sum for triangles, meaning the sum of all the interior angles of a triangle is always 180 degrees. Well, there's a specific formula that we have for the interior angles of any polygon, because as you add sides, you get, um, you get more than just 180 degrees. And actually it's based on the number of triangles that would fit inside of that polygon. And there's actually gonna be another video, but it's also gonna be found in the extra videos uh, in the module in Canvas that explains how to find this formula. But right now for this video, I'm just gonna give you the formula and it is one you're gonna to need to memorize and be able to use on the test. And so the interior angle sum formula is this, parentheses n minus two times 180 where N is the number of sides. So we're always gonna take the number of sides, subtract two first. That's why we have parentheses there because we wanna do parentheses first then multiply. So a number of sides minus two times 180 will always be the interior angle sum. Now, if I wanna find one of those angle measures, remember sum is the total of all of them added up, but let's say I wanted to find one interior angle and this has to be of a regular polygon, okay? It has to be regular for this to work because otherwise they're not all the same. I'm gonna take that formula, n minus two times 180, and all I do is divide by the number of sides in. Okay, so there's two different formulas here, but it really makes sense if you think about it. I always just take the total, divided by how many there are to split them up equally, okay? Now, when we discuss the exterior angles, in last unit, we looked at um, exterior angles of a triangle. When we take, we extend one side, okay? Like if I did this, if I had just a four-sided polygon like this, and I extended every side in one direction like that, all of these exterior angles would add up to equal one thing. And there's not really a formula for that because no matter how many sides there are, it's always gonna add up to equal the same number, okay? And it will always be 360 degrees. So the exterior angles of a polygon will always add up to equal 360 degrees, no matter how many sides there are. Exterior angles of a triangle add up to 360. The exterior angles of a square 
add up to 360, so on and so forth for any number of sides. So to find one of those exterior angles, we do kind of the same thing we did with our previous one. We take that total and we divide by the number of sides. And again, this is of a regular polygon. It has to be regular. We have to know that first, that all the sides and angles are the same. That's the only way for all the exterior angles to all be equal as well. Okay. Now, as we continue to talk about some of this terminology, we want to focus on some other key terms. Okay. One of these would be consecutive vertices or angles. And when we talk about consecutive vertices or, um, or angles, um, those are just, the word consecutive just means in order. Okay. And they will always share a side. So if I gave you, uh, let's say a parallelogram, called it A, B, C, and D, consecutive vertices might be B and C, okay? Because they're in an order, they share side BC, those would be consecutive vertices. Non-consecutive vertices are uh, not in order, okay? They're across from each other across or opposite from each other, okay? And they do not share a side, they share something called a diagonal. When I connect two non-consecutive vertices, I use something called the diagonal. And so in that same parallelogram, A, B, C, D, non-consecutive vertices would be like B and D because they share this diagonal segment B, D, okay? And so it's important to understand that. All right, as we, the first part of this video is kind of lengthy because there's so much definitions and terminology. As long as this is making sense to you, you can kind of keep going through, copying things down, and we'll get through the actual problems here in a moment. All right, now as we talk about polygons, we have two more concepts to discuss, and that's the idea of polygons either being convex or concave. And you might have heard these terms before when we talk about lenses in science, convex and concave. So when we talk about um, polygons that are convex, what that means is that there is no interior angle greater than 180 degrees. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it'll make sense when I draw it, okay? No interior angle greater than 180 degrees. So everything angles back in towards itself. Okay, none of those interior angles are bigger than 180 degrees, meaning stretching beyond 180 degrees, okay? Concave is just the opposite of that, where there is at least one interior angle greater than 180 degrees. And so here's what that would look like. If I start to draw this out and I draw in and then back out like that, and it looks like part of the polygon is caving in. That's the way you can remember it's concave. That word cave makes it look like this has fallen or caved in where this angle is bigger than 180 degrees. It stretches beyond a straight line and kind of angles back inward towards the rest of the polygon. That would make it concave. Okay, so let's turn the page and keep going. Now there's a whole lot of information here. And so there's gonna be some pause the video, copy stuff down kind of things, but we're gonna just start going through and naming polygons. Polygons have unique names based on their number of sides. And you know most of these. And for some of these, we don't actually use the special names. We just name them by their number of sides with an actual number. But for a lot of these, you know the special names. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of speed through this column of names. And I want you to pause the video when it's completed and copy them all down. Okay, so we see here that if there are three sides, we call it a triangle. If there are four sides, we call it a quadrilateral. Then from the rest of these, these come from our prefixes of the word, um, instead of polygon, we're going to replace the poly, which means many, um, and replace that with the unique prefixes that stand for these numbers. Pentagon, the prefix penta means five. Hexagon is six. Now I've kind of highlighted some of these that might not be as common to you and that's heptagon for seven. We don't get a lot of seven sided polygons up until you take geometry, but with seven sides, that's called a heptagon. Um, please don't say hecta, that's not the word. And it's not septa, it's heptagon, okay? Octagon, you remember octa, it means eight, octopus, octagon. Nonagon is nine, 
okay? Not nine-agon, non-agon with an O. Decagon, you might remember, decagon is 10. Now for an 11-sided polygon, that's a weird uh, name. You can look it up. We're just gonna call it 11-GON and it stands for the phrase 11-sided polygon. Okay, you can call it an 11-GON, but that's uh, from then on, any number of sides, we're just gonna use the number. Now 12 does have a unique name that's not too complicated. It's called dodecagon, do for two, deca for 10, two and 10 is 12. Um, but anything other after 10 sides, we don't have to use the special name for, okay? Dodecagon, you might see on some of the things we've done. Dodecagon is 10. Do. Deca, I'm sorry, that goes in 12 sides. Okay, 12 sides is dodecagon. Okay. And now what we're going to do is I want to go through, and I'm again going to have you pause the video and do some of these yourself once you kind of get used to the pattern. But we're going to fill out the rest of this chart for the different sums of the interior angles and the different interior angle individual measures and exterior angle individual measures when we're adding sides, okay? So for a triangle, we already know that all the interior angles add up to 180 degrees, okay? That is found, however, by doing this formula. There are three sides to a triangle. So I'm going to do 3 minus 2 in parentheses, then times 180. 3 minus 2 is just 1. 1 times 180 is 180 degrees. And then we would do a quadrilateral next. Okay, quadrilateral, there are four sides. So I would take 4 minus 2 and then times 180. Well, 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 180 is 360 degrees. And you might remember that if there are four sides, all the angles add up to 360. Okay, and then we would kind of keep following this pattern. Pentagon would be five. It ends up being three times 180 degrees. And if I do three times 180 degrees, that's 540 degrees. Okay. And so you can also notice the pattern that every time I add a side, I'm adding another 180. 180 plus 180 is 360. 360 plus 180 is 540. And so you can keep adding these down the list, but the formula also gives you the same thing, okay? So every time I add 180 degrees, I'm adding a side. And so the rest of it would look like this. And so we get these other um, measures. Now you can keep this table out, but really it's just using this formula every time. Take the number of sides, minus two, times 180, and it will always give you the sum of the interior angles of a polygon, okay? Now, to get the next column over, we're gonna take each of these totals and just divide it by the number of sides that we had. And we remember what this should be from triangles. If there are three sides, I take that 180 degrees and I divide by three, and that gives me 60 degrees. And I'm gonna do that each time. And so when I do that for the rest of these, you'll get the interior angle measures of one of those angles as long as it is a regular polygon only. Okay, as long as it's a regular polygon and all the angles are the same. Okay, so we would get this for this column. All right, as we go through um, this column, you'll see these totals now and you'll notice that our numbers are increasing little by little every time for those, those interior angle measures. And so you get these interior angle measures that keep opening up, opening up when you get a more and more sides. Well, a regular polygon is approaching when I add up more and more and more and more sides, I get something that looks a lot closer to a circle. And so what you'll notice is the more sides I add, my numbers for my sums here, if I kept this column going all the way down, I would get really close to 180 degrees, but I would never get more than 180 degrees because these are all convex polygons. Okay, a regular polygon has to be convex. It cannot be concave. So I'm never gonna get to 180 degrees, a straight line. They'll all get really, really close to it, but they'll never be exactly that. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go down this other column for the exterior angles. Remember the exterior angles always add up to 360. So the sum of all of them when it is a regular polygon 
give us individual angles of whatever 360 divided by the number of sides is. So as we go through and we do this one, we're all going to take, we're going to take 360 and we're going to divide it by the number of sides. So 360 divided by three would be 120 degrees. And then as I keep going, okay, I would have in this case, 360 divided by four, because in quadrilaterals, those are unique. The interior angles add up to 360 and so do the exterior angles. So that's the same 90 degrees. And then again, I'm gonna still do 360 divided by the number of sides divided by five, 72. Okay, so pause the video and kind of get these copied down when you see that I've completed them all. Okay, and we notice these numbers keep getting smaller and smaller because as you increase the size of the interior angle, the exterior angle gets smaller and smaller. And what you'll notice about all of these is very unique. When I compare these two columns, you'll no you should notice, I hope you notice, that 60 plus 120 equals 180. 90 plus 90 equals 180. 108 plus 72 equals 180. In fact, all of these pairs will always add up to 180 degrees. And here's why, okay? When I have an interior angle of a triangle and I extend it with the exterior angle, they form a linear pair. Same thing for a quadrilateral, let's say a square. Interior angle is a right angle, and if I extend it, that's also a right angle, they add up to 180 degrees as well. And so that's the relationship between interior and exterior angles, is that they always will add up to 180 degrees. Okay? And so below here, I've got these formulas and put them in boxes, and that's a very important thing for us to make sure we understand. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that we highlight this because that is an important row for you to understand for these formulas. And you're gonna to have to do a table like this on different assignments or even the review or maybe even the test. So make sure you are uh, copying this down. If you need any of that in total again, here it is, okay? All right, so as we continue on, and I've got a box in the way here and hopefully we'll get rid of that. There you go. We are gonna figure out individual parts of this given some information. So as I am um, finding interior and exterior angles, pay attention to the wording, okay? So what it says, what is the sum of the exterior angles of a 25-sided polygon? Exterior mm -hmm. angles, that keyword tells me my answer is automatically 360 degrees. Exterior angles always add up to 360. It does not matter what sides or how many sides there are, okay? But then when I move on to the next one, number two, it asks about the sum of the interior angles of that polygon. And that's a 30-sided polygon. If it's 30 sides, that means I'm going to use N equals 30. The sum of the interior angles is always this formula. So all I have to do is do N minus 2 times 180 and replace N with a 30. Okay. And 30 minus 2 is 28. When I do 28 times 180, I get a total, big total, of 5,040 degrees. But there are 30 sides to this polygon. So all of those are really big angles, and they're adding up to a really big total. OK? Now, number three, it says, given a regular 23-sided polygon, find the measures of one interior angle. Well, that means I'm using this one. Okay, so I'm going to do n minus 2 times 180, but then I'm going to divide by the number of sides there are, and I'm just going to use 23 instead of n. 23 minus 2 times 180, get that total, and then at the very end, we're going to divide by the, the 23 different angles that there are, because if there's 23 angles, there's also 23 sides. Okay, so I start to simplify this. 23 minus 2 times 180. Um, 23 minus 2 is 21. 21 times 180 gives us a total of 3,780. And you're welcome to use your calculator and check any of my work on this. I encourage you to. Usually I don't make mistakes, but sometimes I do. And if I divide that by 23, I get 164.3 degrees. 
Remember, for interior angles, I should never get a number bigger than 180. Okay. All right, moving on, number four here, given a regular heptagon, and this is one we need to remember what a heptagon is, and it's still on my chart, so I'll go back up here. This is a heptagon. Heptagon has seven sides, and I've done some of these calculations already, but we're going to go ahead and do this. It says find the measure of one exterior angle. So in a heptagon, we're using n equals seven, because there are seven sides and seven angles. So I take my total for exterior angles, which is 360, and I divide it by seven. When I do 360 divided by seven for a seven-sided polygon, I get 51.4 degrees. Okay. All right, and let's keep moving. This is a little bit longer video because it's the first one. We're going to go ahead and go to the next page. Now, this is where um, things get a little bit different. Okay, so for number five, it says to find the measure of angle C. And we need to classify it. When it says classify, that means tell me what I would call this polygon based on its number of sides. And then it also gives me a blank for the sum of the interior angles because that's gonna help me find this. In this case, this is not a regular polygon. These angles and sides are not the same. So I'm gonna have to actually set up an equation based on what the total should equal. Okay, and we can use the chart or we can keep doing the calculation each time, but it's important we understand how to go through and do these problems. You cannot use um, the exact formula for finding one angle measure because these angles are all different. You can tell angle A is an obtuse angle that's bigger than 90, but angle C is gonna be less than 90. And so they're not all the same, but I do need to know how many sides there are. So in this case, there are four sides, which makes it a quadrilateral. Okay, so remember n equals four. The sum of the interior angles for a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. You might remember from the chart previously, okay? If I used n equals four, four minus two is two, two times 180 is 360. That means that all of these expressions should add up to equal 360 degrees. So that equation, it's kind of long, it's this. I'm gonna start with one, eight x plus seven, then add the next one, 5x plus 18, and then the next one, 10x plus 13, and then the final one that I haven't used yet, 14x minus 11. Those should all add up to equal a total of 360 degrees. And then I can combine like terms. Some of you are going to go ahead and combine like terms before you write that down. And that's okay. So we can either do that in our head or um, work it out um, with our calculator. 8 plus 5 is 13 plus 10 is 23 plus 14 is 37. So when I combine the X's, I get 37 X. Okay, and then I combine my other constants, seven, 18, 13, and negative 11. When I add all those together, I get 27. And that still equals 360. This is a much easier equation to work with. We subtract the 27 from both sides and we get 37 X equals 333. Sorry, 37x. And then we divide by 37 on both sides. And 333 divided by 37 is 9. So x is 9, but that's not my final answer. They want you to find the measure of angle C. So to find the measure of angle C, we're going to plug back in to just that expression. OK, so the measure of angle C is equal to 5 times x, or 5 times 9 plus 18, okay, five times nine is 45. So that's 45 plus 18. And when I add those together, I get a total of 63 degrees. And that is your final answer, okay? And so that's what we were, are gonna do on each of these problems, okay? For number six, it says find the value of X. Well, again, we're gonna classify it first based on the number of sides, okay? When there's a, quite a bit of sides here, more than just five or six, it really helps to maybe mark them as you go, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven sides, that is a heptagon. N equals seven, okay? You might remember from the previous um, chart on the other page that a seven-sided polygon 
has a total of 900 degrees. The interior angles all add up to 900 degrees. Okay, so again, I'm going to write an equation and solve for x. I'm just gonna find that one angle measure there, okay? But when I do that, I'm actually using full angle measures here. Remember that a right angle is 90 degrees. Don't forget that one's there, okay? So I'm actually gonna start with that one. 90 plus 148 plus 140 plus 136 plus x plus 142. I'm running out of room, I'm gonna move this. Okay, plus 150, that should be all seven, equals that 900, okay? And so then I combine all these other numbers together, okay? All of these other numbers together actually give me a total of 806, okay? I'm just adding those up. I'll do kind of the quick math for you. You can plug them in your calculator, but you get 100, or 806 plus that X value equals 900. And then we subtract the 806 from both sides and 900 minus 806 is 94 degrees. So a little bit bigger than that, than a right angle, but X is 94 degrees or X is just 94, okay? So what I'm gonna do uh, on, as we go through some of these, some of these I'll take time and work through in the video. Others, I will kind of have you pause the video and find them yourself. But some of these things are a little bit more difficult than the previous problems. Like in this one, they only give you one value, but you need to remember what these markings mean, okay? These markings mean that all of these sides are the same. So whatever number of sides there are, this is a regular polygon, okay? Because there are all those angles and sides are equal to each other, all right? So again, I wanna count up the sides. So I'm gonna start with one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, there are 10 sides, so this is a decagon. Okay, this is a regular decagon. And the sum of the interior angles of a decagon, you might remember from the previous page, is 1,440. Again, you can calculate that using this formula. Okay, so you plug 10 in for in there, but it's gonna give you this. Okay, so if all of those add up to this, there are 10 of these angle measures that are all the same. Now, remember that I could use this formula to find the measure of one of those, okay? And that on that chart from the previous page told me that each interior angle of a regular decagon was 144 degrees. So that tells me that this expression is equal to 144. So I just write that 10x plus 4 equals 144. And then we just subtract 4 from both sides. So 10x equals 140. Divide by 10 and x is 14. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving forward. So in this, we've got all of these exterior angles. Now, before I even classify it or anything else, I need you to remember that exterior angles always add up to 360 degrees, no matter how many sides there are, okay? But then again, you can count up these sides or angles. You'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five exterior angles. Five sides then makes this a pentagon. This is not a regular pentagon. Okay, usually if they give you an expression or a value for each of the angles, you know it's not gonna be regular unless they're all the same or marked as congruent sides. So in a regular pentagon, or I'm sorry, in, in, in any pentagon, the number of, um, or this, the angles add up to 360 degrees. So now I'm gonna do this one where I write this longer equation and set it equal to 360 degrees. And then I'm gonna combine all of these like terms, okay? When I combine all of these like terms, 5x plus 4x plus 9x plus 4x plus 7x, I get 29x. And then I add up all the other constant terms, 4, 4, 9, negative 6, and 1. And those add up to positive 12. And that is still equal to 360. Subtract 12 from both sides and 29x would equal 348 and then divide that by 29, 
and we get that x is 12. Okay, my screen will catch up to my writing here in just a minute. There's a little bit of a lag. Sorry, x is 12. All right. And so now, as we continue, a couple more examples, I want you to try and do these next two on your own. And again, I will pause the video, um, or I'll, I'll, you should pause the video, I'll speed it up and show you what the answer should be, but it, I want you to pause the video and try this on your own, um, see if you can get these right answers. Okay, this is what you should get. Okay, number nine, this is a quadrilateral. There's four sides and they would all add up to three or the angles would all add up to 360 then. So when I write the longer equation, I get this. Okay, when we combine all those terms, I get this one. So X is 116. Number 10 is an octagon and the sum of all the interior angles of an eight sided polygon or an octagon is 1080. So um, I didn't write the longer equation but when we combine all of those terms, we should get this equation, 43 X plus 392 equals 1080. Subtract 392 from both sides, you get 43x equals 688, divide by 43, and x is 16. Okay, I believe that finishes up our lesson for 3b.1. Yes, it does. So if you have any questions, um, make sure you ask me in class or send me a message through Canvas. And remember to go back in and check out um, the extra help videos. There's a video in there that explains where we come up with these formulas. Um, should be helpful information for you.